box. Yeah. What we're going to do is um, we're going to share two examples from uh, such special projects that would go beyond the core competencies for Japanese and East Asian Studies librarians. Okay? And after the presentation of two cases, we'd like to explore common themes you know, across the out-of-box thinking examples. So you have to listen to us. We're going to ask you questions <laughs> after two presentations. You know, we're going to actually uh, break you guys into a small group. And then each one, we're going to ask you questions. <laughs> so you have to pay attention to what we are saying. You know, you're going to see it two completely different cases. Yeah, two completely different cases. But I want you to, you know, listen to us from the point of view in terms of thinking outside of the box. Okay? So, our presenter, first person is here, Asako Yoshida. She's from University of Manitoba, exploring the new ways of supporting students' learning. A case of the collaborative blended learning project in human ecology at the University of Manitoba. Second speaker is myself, Tokiko Fazel, from University of Hawaii at Manoa. My title is Making Things Happen librarians as project manager. So with this, uh, without further ado, here's uh, Asako. Oh. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, I'm Asako Yoshida from University of Manitoba. And my uh, presentation is entitled Thinking outside of information literacy. I know that you had an information literacy session at the last session last, last yesterday, I believe. Right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, so this is something uh, related to information literacy, but uh, my intention is to explore the new ways of supporting student learning. And the collaborative blended learning project in human ecology at the University of Manitoba. So this is a situation. You are asked to provide a, a library session for a course by, a, by the instructor, course instructor. And you do everything you can do to understand what you need to, uh, need to do in the session. So you really carefully serve us over the course and of course, you ask many questions uh, to the instructor and clarify what exactly students are learning in the course and what are expectations of the assignment they are, um, they are working on. So, um, so you do everything you can to prepare for the good session. And yet, at the end, you come out with this question you sense some disconnect among the students to the task they are undertaking. So how do you uh, approach the problem? Is this information literacy question? Um, anybody? Absolutely, yeah. So do you have any solutions that you can think of? It's very complex, isn't it? Assessment in information is always a popular topic. Um, but I approached this exactly same question uh, for the course I had to teach, and uh, I, uh, for, for which I designed a blended learning model. So, why, so I'm from, uh, I'm a liaison library on human ecology, and also I'm uh, liaison library for Asian studies, among other things. I have many hats as a liaison librarian. And why am I talking to my human ecology project in blended learning to Japanese uh, librarians? So my premise for my presentation is that there are many 
possibilities to design uh, appropriate pedagogy in a brand new learning model to support the student learning according to the level, its disciplinary orientation, specific circumstances, and learning objective of a given course, if, if it is called for. So it doesn't matter what level, what disciplinary area you are talking about. This might uh, orientation is that the uh, blended learning can be a solution to the problem you might be having, especially in the disconnect between students and learning objectives or whatever they are working on. So what is blended learning? So I took the uh, description from Wikipedia and uh, basically they give any sources you refer to, you get about the same uh, definition. Blended learning in education research refers to a mixing of different learning environments. It combines traditional face-to-face -face classroom methods with a more modern computer, this modern is kind of funny sound to it, computer-mediated activities. And further, you know, with Pelia, uh, the as of now, there, there is no consensus on a single agreed upon definition for blended learning. So it gave us a sort of a space for us to experiment uh, whatever blended learning model we are building to support uh, a student learning in our human ecology case. So let me introduce what Faculty of Human Ecology at the University of Manitoba. Um, the Faculty of, of, of Human Ecology started as a school of um, home economics. So home economics is known as the uh, science related to women's work, so to say. Um, but by during the 80s, it took a modern perspective and it changed the name to human ecology and it became uh, faculty of human ecology. And currently, there are three key departments, and there are family social sciences, human nutritional sciences, and textile sciences. So some of the research area uh, in human social sciences, uh, family social sciences are um, uh, like family um, economic health, uh, family violence, um, and uh, the aging studies and uh, community development. So they are more towards social sciences research orientation. And human nutrition sciences, they, uh, the department produce future dietitians in the province. And also researchers in the department are involving more towards scientific research or medical or health-related research, uh, the sort of uh, health and the nutrition and the physiology and uh, disease and that sort of research. Um, also, uh, human nutrition sciences, the scientists in the department were the original uh, researchers who uh, first tested the, uh, with human uh, subjects the, um, the the, the canola oil, which was which is extracted from rape seeds, and apparently rape seeds are not edible, but they're made into what we know as canola oil, which is edible, and they conducted the first test with a human subject. Um, and textile sciences, it's very, very, varied. Um, some. Uh, researchers uh, are into business or consumer science aspects of uh, industry-related textile science, sciences, and some are uh, involved in uh, more of uh, material science or kind of medical textile with uh, using nanotechnology. So uh, as you can see, the uh, faculty is very highly interdisciplinary. And uh, every year we receive about up to 150 students into the program focusing on one of these uh, degrees in, in the uh, uh, programs. 
Okay, so um, it started as the uh, science of uh, uh, the things related to women's work back in 1910, and in the last 15 years, all these departments transformed themselves into the academic units with very active um, industry-based research, especially uh, human and nature sciences and textile sciences. And I would say family social sciences, I would say active social science research. Okay. So, um, oops. I think order is reversed, so I'm going to go this first. So this is because we work, uh, we design uh, this uh, blended learning model and this is second year of uh, uh, foundational course for human ecology students. And it's called Perspective in Communication. And it has been around over 20 years. And focused on research and writing skills, mainly, mainly taught by a session instructor, at least as I know in the last five, six years, it will, it's been taught by, uh, regularly taught by a session instructor. And so service is given, and every every time new instructor is hired, they just go uh, run with that, so to say. Uh, so in the summer 2011, uh, we found that this was the last round of the uh, this course because the uh, fa faculty is going um, revamping of the under foundational courses in undergraduate. So this was good opportunity for for us to do a pilot project um, with a small group of students. So uh, initially, we had uh, 14 students enrolled, but the only 11, or I shouldn't say, 11 students completed the course. Okay. So what is the impetus for initiating this project? And there are three factors. Um, so December, uh, around October 20, uh, 2010, there was a call for a proposal um, from the, for the uh, 2011 Summer Session Innovation Fund from the Extended Education Unit at the university. So when I found out, I uh, called up my potential collaborators. And why this triggered my interest is that I have been interested in scholarship for teaching and learning. That's the uh, sort of emerging movement um, to uh, inquire how students are engaging and uh, what is the good methods of teaching, pedagogical issues to engage students better and support student learning. Um, and uh, uh, sort of uh, why this movement is that the, uh, um, the idea the idea is that uh, many faculty members become teaching, get teaching positions because of their um, expertise in their own area, but they, uh, they start as a novice teacher. They never get trained as a you know, teacher, how to teach high school, uh, the, the university students. So uh, there's a room for you know, the faculty uh, teaching faculty to get involved in better ways and sharing the ideas by publishing and uh, uh, sharing the uh, research results. So that's the scholarship of teaching and learning. So I wanted to bring this aspect into my librarianship and I always wanted to do it but I never had a chance to really see the fit in librarianship because of because if teaching is concerned, you know, it's busy talking about information literacy, and it just didn't fit, fit in well with that thinking. So, um, and then also I was interested in emerging technology for learning, and uh, this raises the issue of, um, you know, the uh, rapidly changing um, the, uh, the information and digital information landscape. Um, and also, we are experiencing new generation of uh, learners who well, who are here when who already 
uh, who always know about the um, internet, they, they were born, when they were born, internet was there. So there's a completely new envi environment with respect to how to relate to or access to, to information. Um, also, the, uh, we have to deal with more of uh, abundance Ad uh, abundance of information rather than scarcity of information. There's so much information out there. So uh, the uh, this this orientation gave me an idea of maybe you know focus of supporting students is not access to how to access information, but the use of information. Um, unfortunately, in my project, because we are bound by given syllabus. And use, in terms of what kind of tools we use, turn out to be very conservative because we can't really experiment with all social networking tools. So we are very bound by limited um, tools, which I'm going to explain shortly. So this was a collab highly collaborative work. So human ecology at the end of my brain, that's myself. And uh, uh, my co-investigator was Cassie Block. She is a writing instructor from Learning Assistance Center. And over a couple of months, we became a good friend, coffee friend. And there's a Starbucks in the library, and it became a nice kind of forum for us to get together and uh, have all sorts of uh, informal discussions. And one of the things that we exchanged was the, uh, the course, uh, instructional design course, uh, both of us took at the different times. So we exchanged the notes about the course. And from there, I got the sense that she would be a good collaborator for the project and uh, uh, quite nicely connected to her with, for the project. And, and then, um, so we did all the background kind of uh, <laughs> necessary work. And then I also con contact, contact the faculty of human ecology. And with respect to collaboration in this project, everything worked very nicely. It's like a nice, magically connected and fairly uh, easily connected to uh, right people. And then everything went smoothly. So for the faculty of human ecology, the faculty asked me to talk to an academic advisor about the project, and she became uh, the person representing the faculty and worked on the uh, grant, pro uh, grant proposal. And uh, so everything went together uh, very well. And uh, when we received the grant, uh, then there was a couple of months, and then we, we waited till course instructor got hired. And we had about one month to do real um, groundwork to establish spread learning uh, environment. And uh, it, for the last uh, for the last couple of weeks, just before uh, we started the course, uh, we collaborated with the course instructor. So uh, this is where we had um, many informal discussion and tried to understand what exactly we were trying to accomplish that we wanted to do in the project. And so we, so what we were interested in was well, providing a better learning environment by incorporating, incorporating blended learning model into a traditional pre predominantly lecture-based course, and also we wanted to do some kind of research. We call it action research because we're designing and also trying to understand what students are experiencing our pedagogy. So uh, we did uh, uh, action research to understand student learning experiences. So what we did is, the, uh, first of all, we uh, conducted two focus group sessions with the students who have taken the course in the past four, four years. We managed to gather seven students. And during the, um, uh, no, I shouldn't say during, but for the course part, we uh, conducted student survey at the end, the last class of the course, and the old students who completed uh, 
course for this period. And also seven students volunteered to, to do an interview sessions with us. And it, uh, this one was kind of an add-on. At the last minute, we said, oh, we need to interview uh, instructor. So we did an <laughs> interview instructor. But all these processes require uh, ethics review. And I have never done ethics review. I've never gone through ethics review process. So Kathy has some experience, but uh, very, as, as you can, I, I mean, it was really um, learn as you go. And uh, everything we did uh, kept us always on our toes, you know. Um, and it's good things about the collaboration is that we, we always had a candid discussions among collaborators. Um, so focusing on how to facilitate the student learning, that's the most important thing in our project. And we always go back to that focus. Um, and also, given that it's not really completely open, I mean, we always have to check against the uh, uh, what's possible within the university administrative framework. And it's nice to have that collaboration because you don't want to uh, offend anybody <laughs> in that administrative uh, area. So basically, um, uh, we designed blended learning supporting two assigned papers in the course. So just to give you an example, this, so this is the first uh, paper draft assignment. And paper number one, the student had to uh, write reflective definition of human ecology. And this doesn't mean much to you, but what it is is that they are coming into human ecology, whatever you, they, they're pursuing human nutritional area or textile sciences or family social, social <laughs> sciences. But uh, the, the, basically, the assignment wants them to reflect upon why you are connecting to human ecology in terms of where they want to go in the future. And they want to incorporate uh, six external sources to establish that um, identity. So this was the original uh, evaluation scheme. Um, and so traditionally, in the past, um, student was giving, uh, given 5% for doing concept map. And next, the paper outline 5%, other bibliography 5%. So in designing a blended learning model, we combined all first three, 50%, area as online um, interactive exercises. And we gave them 15% uh, if they participate. Because we thought that in the past, I, we found that the students are disconnected in each steps. They just wanted to, wanted to do each work to get 5%. That kind of mentality. Whereas if we can string all together and uh, give them sense these are all connected, then it's better. And I, we thought that we could do better in a blended learning model. Okay. So, okay. So what we did is uh, that uh, uh, we asked, uh, at the beginning of the course, we asked students to interview each other. And, uh, uh, the, uh, everybody posted a paragraph summarizing the person they interviewed, what they say. Um, and that's the first exercise. Second exercise was posting their outline uh, after my mind mapping exercise. And then um, they have to respond to two peers in terms of effecting, effectiveness of uh, uh, providing a, a good outline. And this is the same. The third one is the posting a draft in another bibliography. And they have to comment to the two peers in terms of effectiveness of providing a, a good another bibliography. Here, we didn't want to criticize or anything, just to focus on positive things so that we can encourage some kind of interaction, but in a limited 
manner, in a controllable manner. Also, we provided an um, online guide um, to scaffold their learning. And uh, what we use is, is, is probably everybody recognizes this. This is a, a Spring Share a Campus Guide platform. And the libraries uh, adapted uh, Spring Share to produce our LibGuide uh, late spring. And the first thing I made with the uh, Campus Guide was this um, course guide. And uh, before my subject guides. So, um, just to show you some tabs that we created. So we have a specific tab for uh, paper number one. Paper number two is just the finalized form of the draft of paper one. So, uh, it's, so jump to number three, academic ethics, but another paper they have to do. So, um, okay, I'm going to show you more example. And then, mind mapping, outlining, gathering relevant sources, writing tips and exercise, integrating sourcing, writing APA guide, and here we have all the reading links, uh, lead, reading lists available for the course. So uh, uh, Kathy provided some of the uh, uh, tips and also some exercise they can do. Um, and these are nice, uh, different sources as they uh, work on the assignment. But just give you, to give you an example of the, uh, what I, what we provided for the paper, uh, paper first, first paper, um, we tried to explain what um, this paper, what students expected to write in this paper <laughs> in a plain language. Um, so we started with, since we started with interviewing each other in the class, so we referred to, you know, my story, started with my story, because we want to make sure that they are connecting to their own uh, connection, not the others, not the textbook definition. Uh, so we made sure that we start with my story and the expectation <coughs> in uh, this professional piece uh, and so on. And also, I um, videoed three people, two uh, recent graduates, and one uh, fourth-year fourth student who just finished her last class in the program. Okay. Um, <laughs> and asked them to talk about their connection to human ecology and also relationship to their career aspiration and what they're doing if they're uh, past uh, recent graduate and so on. So just to give you an example, this is the uh, Christy Quinn. Hi, my name is Christy Quinn, and I'm recent the credit counselor for the Credit Counseling Society, which is the largest credit counseling service organization in Western Canada. I am also a recent ecology graduate. I majored in family social sciences. Okay. So you get the sense. <laughs> so it lasts about four minutes. And I have uh, three people talking their story. Um, then uh, this is just mind mapping uh, source. And also we connected the uh, uh, online interactive uh, exercise, which, which is taking place in a uh, uh, learning ma management system. We get uh, instruction in the uh, course guide and link to the uh, learning management uh, system. Okay, so this is the annotated bibliography information. And I also gave um, one hour um, in class in, uh, library instruction for the course and the 30 minutes demo of one stop search, which is the uh, discovery tool for the libraries. That's all they needed for this assignment. And also 30 minutes hands on exercise. And the because students really knew what they had to do. So uh, after my demo, everybody is getting very quickly. I don't really need to um, kind of worry. You know, I was surprised that they got much quicker than I thought. OK, sorry. Uh, so, so as I said, I did this, uh, some action research uh, 
uh, project as well related to this uh, brand new learning uh, project. So uh, we have uh, some impact on result is uh, specifically the impact on student learning experience, student learning writing processes, student perception of locating and using relevant sources, student learning processes with the use of online resources, and impact on the instructor. But I just show you running out of time, so I show you highlights from some of the results. So um, this is the overall uh, learning experience of students, and most of them score a great deal of your learning in the course scale from 1 to 5, and many say yes. Eight of them say yes, the five top, and the two say four, and the one said three. And under, um, sorry, understanding writing processes. Online interaction helps students reflect on their own approaches when they saw the approaches of others. Online interaction can help students students develop their voice. Hearing other people's comments and questions gave reminder, reminders and good ideas. You start formulating your own ways. What helped most of us looking at other people's um, outlines? For the future, my outline will be a lot more detailed. So this is some of the uh, students, what students commented on. And some more from students' comments. You never ever get to look at other people's material. You see how other people learn and write. You saw this online. Feedback from classmates was not helpful. However, posting and sharing is important for confidence. Posting for peers shows confidence in what the student has written. There is a broader audience than just the prof. So, I want to go quickly this one. Okay, perception of finding and locating relevant sources. So, this is the two questions we asked in the questionnaire. Do you think that your understanding of how to use existing published information has changed? Do you think that you have a new understanding of how to use relevant sources? Okay. And everybody say, yes, I have a new understanding and can apply it in other papers. And basically, so this is a one to five scale, and they really thought that they were very successful. Students gained sense of success in locating relevant sources for their papers. They understood the importance of APA style in professional writings, because in the past, if that was not the case, they felt very tedious and they hated it. Better appreciation of rival resources. And uh, these are the comments we got from students. And uh, some of you know in North America, we do a labor call survey. And we participate in this big li libraries level uh, survey of uh, library services and uh, uh, resources. And we never get such a good comments about websites. So this was like uh, my colleagues who were working on the committee for assessment was oh, like a jaw drop. <laughs> <laughs> So anyhow, we have to stop six up. Oops. I'm sorry. Conclusion. Okay. Pilot project of blended learning was with uh, this course concluded in success. And we succeeded in teaching information literacy by incorporating a blended learning model into the traditional lecture-based course. Thank you.